Hi. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to have Great Pyrenees as the livestock guardian dogs. Is Alexis Rose uh, from Schitt's Creek. I'm sorry for not responding to like one text, David. And this is David. David? Stop yelling, David. You come here. So we got David and Alexis when they were six, about six months old. Um, yeah. Something on my glasses. Oh no. <laughs> Got distracted. <laughs> they came to us with their habits that they had formed in that time, which were mostly good. But they came from a larger property, so they definitely wanted to wander more. Now they're a year. So they're still um, considered to be puppies for for sure one more year, if not longer, depending on how they do and how they mature. But so. we really wanted to have livestock guardian dogs because we live out in the country and there are coyotes everywhere and we've yeah. got birds. We've got ducks, geese, and chickens. There were definitely a lot of hard lessons to be had. <laughs> yeah. The first thing we learned was Great Pyrenees wander. It is ingrained yeah. in them to just go and, and mark. And that's just part of their breed is mm -hmm. wandering far and wide, being aware of predators in the area, and yeah. like you can't really fight that. So. Right. We live on a pretty busy road. We live pretty close to a state park where a lot of people come through with their campers and their trailers. So it was incredibly important for us to figure out some kind of fencing situation that would prevent them from running out into the road, which yeah. they did a lot when we first got them. It's very frustrating and very stressful. Caused many, many nice. anxiety <laughs> attacks, but only for a little bit. We ended up getting collars. Um, this one's David's. It's a... Uh, it's got this like long antenna on it so we can track him from about nine miles and it works with the you can set the electric fence and the uh, app for it and it works really well you know it's not without its faults which it has many of but honestly it's the best situation <laughs> for us because yeah. we live in a 26 acre property and we just cannot afford to build an eight foot plus fence around the property right now yeah so the next best thing were these collars which honestly they respect the boundary line now if they do exit the boundary because of some really delicious roadkill which they love we tone them and the sound just like immediately gets them to come right back so honestly yeah. it they is... really respect the sound more than anything alexis yeah. has a super high pain tolerance yeah um <laughs> The, a shock does nothing for her and we tested it with the shocks just to get them aware of the boundary yeah. so they knew right away um, David was really sensitive to it so yeah. we turned it down for him like much further than we thought we would have to yeah. and he respected it immediately yeah. and Alexis yeah. she gave no shits she's like her namesake luckily for us she really respects the tone yes. noise the second thing we learned was they bark a lot at night mm -hmm. and that is their job and yeah. it's wonderful so if you're gonna have a great pyrenees it's you make sure you have the space for them they bark to just warn the predators away hey we're here yeah they bark even if there's nothing going on it seems yeah. like and of course they can see and hear much more than we can but sometimes they'll just be barking in the summertime when we have bonfires and we have people over like the dogs will start doing their job they'll start barking and people will be like what's wrong or they'll be like shh, shh it's okay we'll be like no 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 don't shush them. This is their job. Yeah. They're doing they're doing what they have to do. So we haven't had a single predator issue. Yeah, um, huge. which is amazing. We thought we would have predator issues because we got the birds before the dogs. Yeah. Um and we were just on watch a lot of times. But you know, we would hear coyotes and the neighbors, um, they have foxes and coyotes and raccoons and possums and all that stuff. So yeah. um we knew that it had to be addressed, and we are technically in wolf territory, but we haven't had a single predator issue. Even the bald eagles that fly overhead just keep going. Third thing that we've learned. Probably don't buy two puppies from the same litter. That I had no idea about. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know either, and I've had dogs kind of my whole life, but I guess I'd never gotten siblings before, and it's just something to be aware of. I think they call it littermate syndrome, and sometimes litter mates will be more aggressive towards each other than they would towards anyone any other dog in the pack you know we did have a couple instances where david and alexis started to fight um like actually fight a little bit and it 
no one ever got hurt. It wasn't anything like that. But you could just read their snarls. Their mentality changed a couple times where we had to separate them. And now um, we just we have one in the barn and in the run and then one out on the property at all times. And we just rotate them and they get plenty of playtime. But yeah, we don't allow them playtime. to have just the free reign of the property together because two one dog is is kind of smart two dogs are just dumb yeah they, <laughs> they make bad choices when they're together again we'll give them supervised playtime but when if we leave them alone they are bound to get into some trouble honestly it's gotten so much better but we're yeah. still cautious yeah we are i just want to show what we're doing so this is david in the little area outside area he has access to the barn inside and he's just hanging out so we live in zone 4b we are in northern minnesota it's very very cold we don't have to worry about the pups at all like mm. in terms of like staying warm they're polar bears we have plenty of shelters for them they have access to the barn they have access to the workshop and they have, they have dog houses. And we have a couple of dog houses set up for them as well, which mm -hmm. they rarely use. They'll use it if it's like <laughs> negative 25. For the most part, they just hang out in the snow banks and just kind of mm -hmm. chill. And they they yeah. love it. They dig little beds into snow yeah. banks and just call it good. Fifth thing, they have this fur where if they go into mud or dirt, it's it's incredible, amazing. <laughs> like, I'll show a picture of uh, like I'll put one up here, but like there yeah. is this time that Alexis and David came running back to us, like from the neighbor's cornfield in mud. <laughs> like just yeah. like an hour later, they were clean. We yeah. were like, what? <laughs> we thought they were going to be dirty for like a week. Yeah. We thought we were going to have to try to hose them down. And they came back before we could even figure out a solution and they were clean. <laughs> and then the sixth and final lesson. I, I hope so. My ears I'm are cold. I'm so sorry. I'll give you my hat. <laughs> Here, you take the hat. <laughs> sixth and final lesson is they're really good livestock guardian dogs for <clears throat> sheep or goats. Not traditionally very good with chickens mm -hmm. and ducks. So for that reason, uh, we do keep them set. We do keep the birds separated. Um, yeah, we, they don't have full access to the birds because they weren't <coughs> baby baby <coughs> puppies when the, we got the birds or anything like that. We do take extra precautions, but for the most part, like the dogs, we've only, we've only had two or three incident incidents where we're like, oh shit. But yeah, they leave the birds alone. They're very, very uninterested in the birds. But because they're still puppies, we take extra precautions <laughs> to make sure that these dogs don't have access to the birds. So there's a good fence in between them, and we don't ever have them in the bird area. Yeah. As much as we love them and trust them with some things, we don't trust them with the birds. Yeah, not yet, <laughs> at least. And maybe when they're like adults, it'll be better. Maybe when they, we get sheep eventually, they'll, and they have something to really like do and like look after, mm -hmm. it'll be better. But yeah, we're just going to continue to take precautions and like, yeah. So the, uh, the main predators for our birds uh, on this farm actually are the dogs. <laughs> but they're much easier to control yeah. than foxes and coyotes and hawks. That's that. Um, let us know in the comments if you have any other questions about having these dogs. We've learned a lot of lessons. We are still learning lessons. Um, yeah, we're not experts. Don't ask too many questions. <laughs> we love having them so much. Uh, and yeah, we're very lucky. We let there are babies. They're yeah. farm dogs, and we have to treat them more like working dogs, but damn, there are babies. They really are. <laughs> They're too <laughs> precious. All right. Thanks for watching. See ya.